Hi, uh, Josh Carr here, uh, working on yet another case study. This is again from Carr's Challenge Cases, and you can download the actual PDF here from carrealestate.com, K-A-H-R realestate.com. Uh, this is Cordelia Capital case. Um, this one's interesting. The, the, the building of the cash flow is in the hard part. The hard part here is going to be all the valuation stuff. Um, so let's get this thing going and uh, set up the basics for it. So again, simple stuff. Uh, the square footage is 80,000 feet. Easy enough. We got two tenants. One is Gator. And that's going to be 25,000 feet at 20 buck gross. We have an expiry, expiration of 331.25. And here I'll just put in rent and square feet. Okay. And then we've got cane, and that's going to be 20,000 feet at 15, 630, 17. Oopsie, 630, 17. And then finally, there's a new lease. Uh, oh, and we also, hold on, start date. Sorry. 3 1 15, fine. And then we have a new lease. And that's going to be for the remaining space. That's going to be null. And that's going to be 35,000 feet. Uh, and it's going to be 10 years. So uh, if it's 10 years, if we start at 10, 1, 25, oopsie. If I do that, it's starting at 10, 1, 15, and we do end of month that 120, that means if I format that as a date, 10, 30, 125, actually it would be, sorry, 119. So that's going to be my start and my end, right? So... That's going to be my start, my end, groovy. Uh, and there's also TIs and commissions. TIs and leasing commissions. Now, okay, the TI part is easy. That's just 10 bucks times the square footage. So that's just going to be 10 times the square footage. That's my TIs. My leasing commissions is 6% of the entire term. So that's going to be 6%. But what's the rent? Now, this is the first thing. This document does not come up with what the rent is. So let's build in something about the rent. The rent is going to be a control variable. I'm going to make that an input. And I'm going to start with 20 just because I need to have something there. But if I do 20 bucks, so that would be 20 bucks times 35,000 feet, times 10 years, times 6%, that's the commission, right? That's my commission. Cool. And again, we're going to need that later because we're going to have to do some vari variation and stuff. Uh, okay, also, there's nothing about market vacancy factor here. I see it, it addresses there's a vacancy factor. It doesn't say what it is. I'm going to put in... 5% because I got to put something in. You know, maybe it's 5, maybe it's 10. I don't know this market. And then for OPEX, it's going to be 6 bucks, right? So 6 bucks. Cool. Okay, let's build a simple cash flow. So first off, uh dates. If it's starting at 3/1/2015, um that's sort of like saying the last day of fe February, in other words, the first month of cash flow is going to be 33115. Now I want to build that, you know, going out a few months here. So I'm going to say that we've got 120 months of cash flow. See? Don't need to go that far out. Come on. And actually what I'll need to do is probably cuz I want to be able to cap the 11th year to get the sale at the end of year 10, I'm going to go out 132 months. Cool. And then for dates, I'm going to go just as far. 
for dates, I'm going to take that initial date as 3.31.15. Uh, and, you know, I can make this flexible. It could be like, hey, let's go to the end of this month. In other words, EO month zero. In other words, the last, you know, that month, essentially. I could then do EO month, take that, add a month to it. Again, format it so it looks like a date. And then I could drag this bad boy across. And I could also, you know, format the thing. Okay. So now we've got starting March 3115, ending 22826. That sounds right. Okay, so let's start with rents. The first tenant is there until March of 25. Okay. Um, so the first, you know, let's, let's build some lines here. Gator, Kane, Null. Null's the easiest one to do. Null is basically just starts at, uh, the month of October. In other words, month ending 1031-15, otherwise known as starting March, you know, October 1, right? That month of October. <laughs> this one's easy. This is just like, hey... Let's just see what the rent is, which is 35,000 feet times 20 bucks. And, you know, take that and bring that across. That one's easy. Don't need to really worry about that one too much. The messy one, though, is Gator. So Gator, we're going to have the rent in place of 25,000 times 20, but it says here that that's just going to be until 2025, March 2025. Do, 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 do. March 2025. And then Kane is going to be this times that. <coughs> Pardon me. But that's just going to be until June 2017. The question then, of course, is what happens at that point? Now, we don't have any, any assumptions here about what happens at rollover. Uh, we're going to have to build something like that in. Uh, but before we do, and so I'm going to make a little note here of to-do, right? And so we have like a to-do, deal with Gator and Kane when they roll over this is just me making notes for later right obviously that's not a uh that's not going to be a, a permanent addition okay and then this will be my income which will be those three lines take that drag that across That's going to get us, so that's going to be our uh, rental income. Then we're going to need, or, you know, I'll say gross revenue. Better yet, PGR for potential gross revenue. We're going to have a vacancy factor, which I've now not put in there yet. This plus that, because vacancy is usually shown as a negative. We're gonna have our OPEX. That's gonna be six bucks times 80,000 feet. Of course, that's times 80,000 feet divided by 12. And actually, now that I'm talking about it, I just realized I forgot to divide all this by 12, right? Right, okay. Oops. Take that, drag that across. And, uh,
And then finally, we're going to get down to net operating income. Ugh. And, you know, as I'm doing this, I'm realizing I should have made this a little bit wider. Okay. So then NOI is just going to be the EGR minus the, the OPEX. Now, thankfully, there's no financing issues here, so this will not be as painful as it could be otherwise. And let me just format this bad boy here. Okay. So, so far, so good. You know, we've got Gator, which is, that's your monthly rent times your square footage, monthly rent times square footage, monthly rent times square footage. <clears throat> that gets me to PGR. That gets me to EGR, OPEX. You get the idea. Now, the vacancy thing is interesting. There are a lot of different ways to do this. For now, I'm just going to hard code it in, but I could do something funky. I could do some sort of like, um, well, I could do like some sort of vacancy, uh, an actual vacancy calculation. I didn't really do that here. Um, you know, yeah, sure, what the heck, let's do it. If I wanted to do a sort of running vacancy total, the easiest way to do this, I think, would be to say basically, hey, if this is in effect, basically, if that's greater than zero, then put in the square footage. If not, put in zero. In the same way, I could copy, paste, paste, and I could be like, hey, and if this is greater than that, and if this is greater than that, I could take this, I could drag this across, and then what I could do for vacancy calculations is I could just do sort of the world's dumbest calculation. I could just basically say, okay, take the sum of these three cells, divide it by that square footage, make it a percentage, and there she is. We have a vacancy factor where we have what the occupancy is, right? So there it's 56% least, 56% least, 100% least. You get the idea. And then down here, there's no, you know, they start to burn off, right? 75, 75, 75. And I think at the end, it's down to 44 because the other tenant burns off. Okay, so this is going to be my occupancy, right? And, you know, usually I wouldn't put that in the cash flow. Usually I'd put that, like, up here or something. Um, let me just move it just because I can. Okay, that's occupancy. And then down here, I'm going to have a vacancy factor that basically just says, let's do if this... So 5% vacancy factor is another way of saying there's 95% occupancy, right? So what I could do is I could just say if 1 minus this is greater than or equal to the occupancy, then put in nothing. Otherwise, take 5% of the PGR times negative one. If I do that, and I gotta make that vacancy factor here fixed. If I take that and then I drag it across, what we should see is no vacancy adjustment until finally there is, and that's 5% of that, All right? Well, there are other ways to do this, because if you think about it, and here's where it gets kind of ugly, is taking a 5% vacancy factor is fine when the building's full. But what if it's not entirely full? Then you'd want to have it sort of fluctuate. Like if it's 98% full, I'd take 3% off. For now, I'm going to make it simple. I'm just going to say take 5% off. But again, like with all models, you can always make it more complex. For now, I'll just do something simple like 
take nothing off until it's leased, and then take 5% off. And again, you know, that's something that might come up in like some sort of uh, conversation where someone could look at this and say, well, that's great, you're taking 5% off, but what if it's 98% leased? And then questions like, you know, if it's 98% leased and you're taking off only, say, 3%, or, yeah, are you taking, like, how are you figuring out what the adjustment should be? Are you just taking 3% of what's there? Are you figuring out what market should be to make the adjustment? There are all kinds of conversations you could get into. In any event, this gets me a simple NOI, and that's probably a good starting place. In the next video, we'll talk about the TIs, the commissions, and actual some valuation stuff, and that's where it's going to get really interesting. Cool. Uh, if this sort of stuff fills you with joy, check out my website at kahrrealestate.com. If you have additional cases you want me to check out, email them to josh at kahrrealestate.com. And until I speak to you again, keep building better models. Thanks. <laughs>